call to mind our sins and ask the Lord his mercy to forgive us. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed and nourish us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, Amen. for Christ, Amen. and on earth, peace, peace, people, and good We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, and for the King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, on the of the Son, Lord God, Lord God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her, nor did I liken any priceless gem to her. Because all gold, in view of her, is a little sand, and before her, Silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. <laughs>
Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him, to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. secondary in the story. Jesus is not directing all those who would be disciples to divest themselves of everything they have, sell what they have, give to the poor and follow. Some will do that. Some will not. But that is not 
what Jesus is directing in the gospel today. Brother, as this man comes up, and it's, it's an interesting character, really. He comes with urgency, doesn't he? He runs up. He throws himself at Jesus' feet. He asks the question. Something is clearly bothering him. Something uh, that he needs an answer for. And he comes to Jesus and he asks about eternal life. And when Jesus tells him to keep the commandments, he says, we have no reason to doubt, quite honestly, that he has done these all his life. But then Jesus looks at him. And I'm reminded there of the second reading today. Remember when we heard from Hebrews, the word of God cuts like a two-edged sword, which was a rather fearsome weapon in the ancient world, cutting right to the heart. And Jesus looks at this man and he sees and cuts right to the center. Perhaps to what the man knew, but, but didn't want to look at. And the problem for him is that indeed he is a wealthy man, but it is his wealth for him that is keeping him from giving himself completely to God. Jesus invites him to follow him, to come with him. He is the only one in the gospel Jesus invites to follow, but refuses. Jesus looks at him and realizes there's one thing that he won't let go of. There's one thing that is keeping him from giving himself totally to God's call to him. And for him, it is his will. And a very interesting touch, you notice, again, the story is one that I've listed, thought of so many times. I can picture it. The man's face fell. You can almost see it, can't you? The man's face fell. It's almost, again, as I said, he knew the answer to his own question. He was hoping that Jesus would tell him something different. And then he walks away. He walks away. I can identify with that man because, as I said, not because I'm wealthy, but because at different points, I've come to recognize there's something I'm holding back from Christ. Something I'm holding back. A part of my life I don't want to surrender. I don't want to give up. And that's why I can identify with him. What might that be? As I say, from time to time, at different points in life, it might be different things. Or it might be something I stumble with all along. I know in talking to people about this passage and over the years, different things have been the final thing they just wouldn't let go of. Sometimes it's their pride. Sometimes it's a grudge. I'll never forgive him. I'll never forgive her unwillingness to let go of a pain of a regret whatever it might be again that is why the story is so pertinent not because we're wealthy but because the wealth is what this man the part of his life he just won't let go of is there a part of your life, is there a part of my life that I just will not let go of? I know I should. The man came. He's looking for an answer. Give me, give me a way around this. And his face fell. I can identify with that. Because ultimately, over and again, I've realized, by God's grace, that if I'm going to follow him, if I'm going to be faithful, I have to let go. One of the interesting things about the story I've always looked at is what Jesus doesn't do. Do you notice what Jesus doesn't do? He doesn't say, wait, 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 come back, come back. Maybe, maybe try giving it up a little bit. Put, put half your money in the bank, give away half of it, and if it's working out for you, we'll go a little bit at a time. No. This is what's required. It's up to you. It's up to you. Again, the choice 
Sometimes it took me, it's taken me a long time, depending upon what the issue is, it's taken me a long time to let go. And I can be honest with you, there are parts of me now that I still I don't think I've completely let go of. I have to struggle with it and work on it. And sometimes it seems it will never happen. And that brings me to the third part of the gospel today. Something that might seem very hard to believe. Jesus says to the disciples, after he speaks about how salvation is God's gift, we, we don't earn salvation, okay? We don't earn it. In fact, one thing that's interesting about the story is the man's question is the wrong question. It's the wrong question when he comes to Jesus. What must I do to gain eternal life? The answer is can't. There's nothing. Now that's hard for us because we're into points. You know, we, we can we can score this, we can earn this, we can build this up. We can't. We can't. The first part of the first four chapters of uh, Letter to the Romans, Paul makes this very clear. We all sin, we all stand condemned before God. And it's through God's graciousness that we are saved through Christ Jesus. What you need to do is accept the gift in faith. For man, it is impossible, he said. I'll, I'll broaden that out. For man and woman, it is impossible. <laughs> okay. I'm often accused of being sexist, so I want to get, I want to get everybody in here, okay? All right, all right. But not for God. Nothing is impossible for God. Now, that is what gives me hope. In those moments when it seems impossible to let go when I just can't seem to do it. In God's grace, nothing is impossible. That might be very hard to listen to. We've heard it before, Jesus has said it before. The angel Gabriel said it to Mary. Nothing is impossible with God. Listening to that, that's okay. But when it comes to me, when it comes to my struggles, do I believe it? as easily as I believe the words of Gabriel to Mary, or Jesus to somebody in it. Yes, we are in many ways like this man. And yes, it's going to be up to us to decide. That is what the Lord wants us to do, to follow him, to come to him. And remember, as much of a struggle as it might be, nothing is impossible for God. Maybe one of the great acts of faith we have to make is, I thought of this over the years too, that as terrible as my sins can be, my sin is not stronger than God's grace. My sin is not so stronger than God's grace. Sometimes that's hard to believe and trust, but it's absolutely true. Trusting in God's grace, nothing is impossible with God. And therefore, if I trust in God's grace, nothing is impossible for us. Profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. Amen. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the courage to respond to Christ's call to care for all who are in need. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For all our sisters and brothers who have responded to Christ's call and vocational commitment, for married couples, vowed religious, deacons, and priests, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle to hear the call of Christ and thus discover their vocation, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all who are imprisoned by addiction to wealth, power, or prestige, that their many possessions may cease to be an obstacle to hearing the call of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our For young people and adults with special needs, and for their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all who bear the burdens of illness and disability, especially Carl Buggy, Francis Carter, Jen Sestaro, Hunter Vaccaro, Robert Fettinger, James Brownfield, and Erica Craig, that our prayers may sustain their, them in hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all the faithful departed, especially Laura Heck and Peter J. Engel, that they may rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all the prayers in our Prayer of Intentions book, and for the prayers we hold in our hearts, and for Tom Ager and Giovanna Iavai, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, you look upon each person with love, May we imitate your care by sacrificing for the sake of all who are in need. We live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Thank you, Lord, this name. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful and the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Mother Cabrini Columbiettes are having a cake sale after all masses this weekend. Stop by and pick up some delicious treats. They also will be raffling a basket of cheer. Have a safe and happy Columbus Day weekend, and remember to bring your bulletin when you leave. Thank you. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you, God. Have a good weekend. Two for all. Every session hymn 687. We are the light of the world. 687. <laughs> Oh. Uh -huh.